everyone, this is Derek Dean from MMA Newt and Studio MMA. We got Chris Lights Out Lytle. Now, my question, you've been in the game long enough. Uh, you hear people who've been in the game long, they say, oh, I fought at a county fair, I fought in a warehouse, but I fought in a Bay City Tough Man contest. Yeah. Can you tell stories like that? Is it How much has the game changed since that? Like, oh, man, it's, it's night and day. I remember, like you were saying, my first fight, it was in, I think, it looked like it was a, an old abandoned warehouse in the basement. It was like some karate studio. And it, it looked like something from the scene Fight Club, you know. The, it was real dark. It almost damp, I think. It might have been wet down there. I can't even remember, like, the cage. You had to hold it together. It was horrible, you know. But, uh, yeah, that's what, it was. that's what was going on in 98, brother. So, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's all the stories are probably true. <laughs> <laughs> now, seeing um, back then, you could... It was everything was hard. Like I remember the first time I fought was in a warehouse for Dan Severn's Danger Zone. Danger Zone, yeah. I was You're there. My neck of the woods. I was there in Indiana, yeah. and uh, when I fought, it was just a bunch of people screaming. Now you have people screaming armbar, knee bar. Is it? Does it throw you off when you just? Does you, do you ever want to turn around and say, it's impossible for me to get an armbar from here? Do you understand? You know that? what? I don't even really hear any of that. I mean, it's it's funny after a fight. I'll kind of think back and I'll say, hey, you know, somebody, such and such, you know, you heard somebody yell this, but like in there, like I'll hear, but it doesn't register. I'm mm -hmm. too focused on what's going on, and uh, I don't, really, I don't really hear anything until later on I think about it and I'll laugh and I'm like, hey, what were they talking about? You know, but it's, it's funny. Now you uh, done a lot of boxing. Yeah. Does, how does that translate to MMA? Because you you couldn't many pack you couldn't just step in a ring. It's it's way different. Um, Stands. Yeah, not just that, but you know people don't understand. Uh, from box, I mean boxing, the distance is going to be different. So if yeah. I'm in, in, in punching range, um, you know I've already been in kick range. So you can't just stand in kick range where you set stuff up in boxing because you're going to get kicked. Yeah. If you get closer, you might get taken down. So it really changes everything. Uh, you can have a really good boxer who could be very ineffective in, in, in MMA. You have to really work on everything. Submissions, wrestling, takedowns. Uh, and then you have to learn how to punch from greater distance, I think. Uh, two questions. One, it's almost personal. You were a fireman. I still am fireman. You're still air fireman. Compare, what, I mean, that's that's scary shit. Yeah. Like, that's, I might really <laughs> die. Yeah. Do you ever get into a situation where you're trapped and you just, I've been with um, yeah, it's yeah. been worse. Before. I mean, absolutely. But, you know, I don't think you have time to think of like that. What it is is, um, you know, I've been in some dangerous situations and some fires, and it, it all gets back to the, the same couple principles of you got to learn how to relax, and you got to learn how to use your training, you got to learn how to think. Mm -hmm. You can't panic. And I think that's why these things translate over pretty well, and what helps me in one might help me in the other. Mm -hmm. So that's just about your mindset and your mentality, and, uh, you know, uh, you have to be. The people who panic are the ones that get mad trouble and tap out too quick or you know, get lost in the fire and don't make it out. So. And recently, I don't know if you looked at it, the first uh, no gloves boxing match just happened. Just happened. It's in America. It ended in three rounds. I looked it up on fightnews.com. Who, who legalized that? I have it's in Kentucky. But sure, that's would just you, <laughs> it, Would you do a bare knuckle boxing match or would you stay long? I already do little four ounce gloves. I'm not gonna go. Uh, and do you think it's safe? I don't. Do I think it's safe? Absolutely not. I mean, from one well, I mean, from one standpoint, you'd have to say the whole point of the gloves were to make people not cut open, so mm -hmm. that their brain can. I mean, from a brain standpoint, is it is it safer? Yes. From a, I mean, you're gonna do probably a lot of retinal damage, a lot of scars, a lot of bleeding, a lot of other problems. Mm -hmm. So. Um, would I get involved in that? Uh, no, I mean not unless uh, I, I guess it would depend on the paycheck. Yeah. I shouldn't say that. I gotta clarify. But um, you know, would I would I want to do that? Absolutely not. I mean, you know, you're gonna get you're gonna get hurt. You're gonna get cut open. You're gonna you're gonna permanently damage yourself probably. And uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm shocked that they would allow me that. Okay. Well, I can't thank you enough for your time. I can't wait to see you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.